Hello, this is David Sloan Wilson for Evolution, This View of Life, the magazine that approaches anything and everything from an evolutionary perspective. I'm pleased to be interviewing Peter Bauman of the Bauman Foundation. And uh, welcome, Peter. Welcome, David. And uh, we're here to talk about uh, an event that you are staging in San Francisco on March 24th called Being Human 2012. We have interviewed you previously, and we'll make that interview available on our uh, on the same page about your uh, interesting history as a as a, um, a musician and how you became the president of a evolution oriented foundation. But let's get right to the event. Uh, tell us what it is. Uh, Being Human 2012 is a conversation. It's an event that invites the public to hear from uh, our leading scientists uh, what the latest insights are into understanding who we are as human beings. Great, and uh, and uh, how is it uh, organized? You told me uh, just uh, a minute ago that uh, a thousand people are are coming to this, and there are a few tickets left. So uh, viewers, if they hurry, can uh, can be part of this event. So uh, what what is this uh, thousand plus people going to experience? Well, it's uh, it's a broad range uh, of presentations, anywhere from a human perception to mental representations. Uh, to some philosophical uh, perspectives on naive realism, uh, and then and to social aspects, it's how we are shaped by our culture and in turn how we shape our culture. So there will be presentations from leading scientists, and then Richie Davidson will uh, moderate and interview the scientists uh, to reveal more about what they've learned. Good, so it won't just be straight lecture mode, there'll be an interactive mode that, um, that um, is that right? Yeah, it's, it's going to be probably um, a third uh, presentations, uh, some videos, and a third conversation. Great. And uh, tell us some of the, uh, of the um, uh, luminaries who are going to be there. Well, uh, we have Bo Lotto from, Lotto, uh, from uh, London, who is a perception uh, researcher. We have uh, V.S. Ramachan uh, from San Diego, uh, Laurie Santos from uh, Yale, uh, Pennsylvania, then uh, uh, we have uh, Dr. Metzinger from Germany, a philosopher, uh, David Eagleman from Houston, uh, Hazel Marcus from Stanford, uh, then we have a uh, contemplative, uh, Gallic Rinpoche, uh, and then we have John Kabat-Zinn, uh, and then we have uh, Anne Harrington from Harvard. Uh, that's a certain, certainly a star-studded uh, uh, cast. Now, they represent multiple disciplines, and uh, I'm the kind of person who tends to see everything from an evolutionary perspective, but I'd like you, especially for our Evolution This View of Life audience, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, uh, how you view evolution and where it sits in the constellation of, of perspectives that you've assembled here for the, uh, for the uh, event. Well, um, I, I, like you, see uh, uh, you know, human activities uh, through an evolutionary set, uh, lens. Uh, and uh, that underlies uh, uh, really the whole uh, conversation. Uh, and most of the presenters, I've spent some time with them talking about it, and the frame is really seeing ourselves not as isolated in our time and age and how we act, but how uh, our evolutionary history informs who we are today. Right, and your, and your uh, title, Being Human, um, actually the title itself does not have a change aspect, but I know, having being familiar with your work, uh, is that uh, you see uh, evolution very much as including uh, cultural evolution in addition to genetic evolution, so that we're still in the process of changing, and, and uh, really uh, part, of this, um, uh, part of this event will be so that we can be more mindful of who we are, so that we can, uh, we can uh, uh, become even better in the future. Am I fairly representing you that way, and uh, would you like to elaborate on that? Uh, absolutely, and, and uh, the interesting thing, the more I looked at that in the context of the name being human, and I'll do an introduction to the day, I'm going to refer to uh, two aspects. I mean, there's clearly the circumstances have changed quite dramatically, but there are certain qualities as human beings that have not changed that much. I mean, our drives, our aspirations, our emotions the sensation, perception, all of these things are probably consistent for the last couple of hundred thousand years. Yeah. But our circumstances and the way it plays itself out in our culture has changed dramatically. 
Yeah, I think so. And uh, something I try to convey is the is the, the the combination, the seemingly paradoxical combination of elaborate genetic innateness and elaborate flexibility. They seem like opposites, but they're not. They go together like a Zen koan. Well, or so it seems. I mean, it, it, they often doesn't don't get distinguished. But I mean, you know, if you look a little closer, there's also a lot of rough and tumble going on. You know, because. Uh, the emotions are not really appreciated for their origin and their purpose. Yeah. Uh, our culture often clashes with our fundamental rights. Right, right. And actually, I mean, our readers, our, our listeners can go back to our other, to our other um, um, interview with you. But tell us very briefly about how you got into all of this. I'm always so happy when somebody from... Uh, a non-scientific background basically uh, 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 takes takes this on as you as you have. So give us a a one minute uh, a one minute uh, uh, autobiography here. Okay, I'll try my best to keep it to one minute. Uh, <laughs> essentially, uh, one day I woke up in my late forties and realized that ten thousand days left to live, and uh, try to understand how do I uh, make the most use of those ten thousand days. Uh, and I looked at everything. I looked at the wisdom traditions, I looked at religions, I looked at uh, evolutionary psychology, of course, uh, genetics and happiness set points, uh, what have you. Uh, but what it boils down to is really that we have to make decisions. If I want to live the 10,000 days, how do I make my decisions? And looking at that, I realized that most of them are driven by emotional content, wanting to feel good, avoiding wanting to feel bad, and that plays itself out in, in, across the board. Every decision has an underlying affective quality attached to it. So uh, once I realized that, I looked at where that came from, and evolution was the obvious lens to look through. Right, right. Now you are also uh, an improvisational musician, a kind of musician where you just start playing without any any preparation, or at least the immediate preparation. And I know that with the meeting we were at uh, a few months ago. Uh, you made a connection between that sort of uh, spontaneity, uh, basically, if that's not evolution in action, what would be, and, uh, and, uh, and what you're doing now. So what do, what do you think about improvisation as something that you do and is uh, always well, done? I think most of life is improvisation. We just keep telling ourselves the story that we know what we're doing. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I had the, uh, the real benefit of not being academic. I mean, obviously, I have a lot of uh, knowledge holes, but not being a academic allowed me more freedom to really put a lot of different pieces of the puzzle together, and I really enjoyed that uh, creative part of it. Yeah, that's true. Being an academic has its uh, drawbacks. Uh, I can attest to. Uh, I can attest to that. So, so um, as a final question, I think as a provocative question, uh, being human. Uh, uh, 2012 means that you expect to uh, repeat the uh, experience. And uh, what would uh, being human 2020 be like that's different than 2012? What's your hope for the, for the future? Well, uh, I think, uh, I don't know if I would call it hope, but my anticipation is that uh, if we look back, uh, there's just an accumulated knowledge and a more fine-grained understanding of who we are as human beings. And I think that trend will continue. So that maybe in, in the year 2020, uh, uh, the clash that originally was physical and now it's predominantly in belief systems that clash, that we get to a point where we understand how this plays itself out and we just have a greater awareness and bigger insights into how we function as human beings. Well, you know, that's a very good answer, and and, uh, and uh, I'm so happy to have you join the community, basically, of uh, thinkers and doers uh, for this uh, for this great enterprise. And uh, we'll have a couple of reporters from Evolution This View of Life covering your event and interviewing some of your uh, some of your uh, participants so that we can report on on your great event, and also we'll provide information so that uh, among the uh, 50 to 80 uh, remaining seats, uh, we'll try to pack them with evolutionists. <laughs> great. Well, thank you so much, David. Thanks for your interest. Okay. Best of luck. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.